so glad to be here with you uh, today and to be, you know, sharing some ideas with you, ideas that can be a starting point from your own teaching situation. Why a play-based approach? Well, it provides the most natural and meaningful process by which the students, children construct their own knowledge, they develop a skill, and they just learn by doing, they learn by experimenting, by exploring. And it also, if we think about a play-based learning, it stimulates their imagination and their creativity as well. What is phonics? Very simple. Phonics is the relationship between sound and spelling. So phonics is the first instruction in teaching a child to learn how to read. The first phase, for me, is one of the most important phases that we can that we can have in phonics, and this is to help children to become good listeners, is to develop their phonemic awareness. And how are we going to do this? To engage them in activities in which the main aim is listening. This phase is uh, divided into seven aspects, or consists of seven, seven aspects. One is environmental sounds. That is the first step in the journey, a phonics journey, to help children to listen to the sounds in the environment around them. Let's move now on to letter sound. This is phase two. This involves thinking about what sound a word starts with, saying the sound out loud and then recognizing how that sound is represented by the letter. For example, snake, spider, and then once we have the gestures and the visual is when we show our students the sound, but we don't say the name of the letter. You know that a Spanish student tend to say S, snake, S, snow, so we try to avoid this. Okay, this is phase phase three, for example. The phase three is when we get the students just to introduce, for example, consonant diagrams. That is to say, uh, when we have um, two consonants together to make um, a sound, and then we have vowel diagrams, two vowels together to make one sound. Okay, so one activity I just do with my students is we have all these hands. In this case, we are practicing the E sound, okay? As you can see, we have plenty of them, okay? And the idea is like we put them on the floor once they have been introduced, because the idea here is even further practice. We have a bean bag and we ask the child to toss the bean bag. If the bean bag lands on the hand or quite close to the hand, they have to say a word either containing or beginning with that sound. So by the time we reach this phase, we know that all our students know or recognizes most of the, of the sounds, okay, that they're familiar with. Now, if you can see here, I have like mm, flashcards and the a ah, and the mm, I, sorry, mm, I cannot do it now, but I use, I put this on the board, okay, just as it fits separated, not together, and then I start saying ah, mm, and it's time to close that ah, mm, ah, mm. Do we have the word sand? If you have, for example, this on your board, okay? If you write, for example, you write this stick this, the cat is on the mat, okay? What happens with a tricky word such as the or is or dance? So I have this that I use with my student, it is a fly swatter, and then they use this to say the because it goes together. We're not going to blend it with the, the. And then they go, for example, k -a -t. cat. I hope you enjoyed the webinar and I hope that you can um, start using and doing some of these practical uh, ideas in your 
in your teaching, okay? And for your own students and that's everybody um, has fun teaching, teaching phonics.